The Shastasaurus is a brand new community voted creature for Ark Survival Ascended that just released with the launch of the Center Ascended. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to tame it as well as explain all of the abilities that it has. Let's get cracking. Alright Tinkers, I'm Toast Bloke and I'm back on the Centre Ascended to show you how to tame the Shastasaurus, a brand new underwater creature that just launched with the Centre Ascended. And this one's really cool because it has a saddle that is a submarine. Like it's a vacuum sealed air compartment that you can live in, carry creatures in, and it's just a really cool concept. Now then, because this is an underwater creature, we are going to need a way of getting underwater. And there is only one method that will work for this job. It is the Ichthyosaurus. So I've got those here. I've also got myself some scuba. And if I go and get on this Ichthyosaurus here, I've got some of the other things I will need, such as extraordinary kibble, and then also spare scuba and some rocket propelled grenades. Now, before we get started, I do want to explain, this is not an early game team. You're not going to want to rock into the map, doing a fresh start and take this on. You need to be more end game to be able to do this. In fact, you need to be end game for this team, which makes sense because it'd be mad if everybody was just bombing around on these day one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my scuba on because we are going underwater and I'm just going to ride my ichthyosaurus. Now I do have a pod here, but when I was testing this, you don't actually need a full pod. You can do this with one ichthyosaurus. The dossier kind of suggested that I would need more than one, but I don't. I just need one. So yeah. And I was trying to figure this all out from what the dossier said, and it wasn't quite accurate. Although it was, it was just a little bit confusing and I'll explain why as we get going. But I think I can see its tail there. There was a Shastasaurus down here somewhere. And look at this brute in all of its glory. It's actually incredible. It's such a nice design. They've got some really cool colours from what I've seen so far. And I'm really liking it. I can't wait to actually get to the point where I can tame one and have one in game. Now, the reason I could see this super easy is because I have fog turned off because it was an absolute nightmare finding these. I feel like they don't actually spawn in a view until you're really quite close as well. So yeah, you've got to make sure that you're able to see these and I'm finding them all the time in this area, which is just around this section of water here, particularly this side, they just seem to be they're in absolute massive quantities. Now you'll notice this has seen my ichthyosaurus and it's kind of locked onto it and it'll follow it. It's chilled out. And I was trying to work out what to do for ages because the dossier says you've got to scrape barnacles off its back, right? You've got to chill it, let it be friends with your podic ichthyosaurus and get barnacles. And none of this was happening. None of this was working. What I accidentally did though one time is had one of followers too close to the surface of the water and something happened. A mini game triggered so we are going to take this up to the surface i'm a little bit worried here because i can see there's a meg on the way we don't really want to start taming this while we've got a meg on our tail so what i'm going to do this is where the pod might come in handy you don't need it but you could use other teams obviously that can kill megs i could kill them with weapons too but i think what i'm going to do is this should follow me all the way over here where it's a little bit safer i think i'm going to take it to the surface of the water that Meg is gone now. I think we've lost it. We've got more Ichthys coming. And we're just going to get this to follow us. And we want to take it up to the surface of the water when we feel like it's safe. I think we've lost the Meg. Let's go for it. This could be a bad idea. And just be careful because I've got trapped in this thing's mouth a few times when it's been following us. But as soon as that gets above water, you'll see that I need to jump in and swim. And these aren't barnacles. These are leeches. But... They are the same kind of concept as explained. We're just going to get a sickle and we're going to scrape these off the back of the Shastasaurus. Like so. And you can see that that little mini game bar is going up. I missed that time. And then that is complete. Once you've done that, you are ready to feed this thing. So let's get the kibble wherever I put it. If I left it on the ichthy, that's not good. I was meant to grab that straight away. Is that not mine? What is going on? I hope I don't miss this feed back of the hot bar i hope the other ichthy is not in the way go up to its mouth feed it and then you just rinse and repeat that mini game now luckily we are just out of the way just in time before this meg gets involved so we are going to make sure we follow that shasta but i've got to make sure that the megs aren't anywhere near us while we're doing this because i'd imagine 
If it gets bit, then we're going to lose progress. If I get killed, we're definitely not going to get the tame done. So let's get it to follow me again. Looks like it's locking on. So I should be able to take it to the surface of the water. And that's the whole process. It is just rinse and repeat. Now, I'm hoping we're in the all clear here from Megs. I'm not seeing any if I bring it up over here. I'm just going to be super quick again. Make sure it follows us up. As soon as it hits the surface, we are bombing off. This is where scuba and flippers really come in handy because you get that extra speed. And again, we've got the three leeches here. Just going to hit them with a the sickle. There's one. Then we get two. And then the third and final one, these ones are more spread across its whole body. Oh, no, I hit it. No, I didn't. And I've cleared it, so it can now be fed. Might be best to actually start at the tail and work towards the mouth, but this is just the way we've done it this time. It's going to swim up. We've got the kibble in the last slot and feed, and we are at 41%. Now, like I said, it's an end game tape, so you are not getting a lot of progress for the kibble. I'm actually on three times rates. That's what I always play on. So this is actually a little bit boosted, and I think this is only a level 15. So you can imagine how long this would take but I feel like it should. It's one of the bigger, more impressive creatures in the game. They can't make it too easy to get. Otherwise, like I say, every Tom, Dick and Harry would have one. Really, really quickly. Now, it's not wanting to follow us right now. For some reason. I'm unsure why. It looked like it was going to. Is it now? Yeah, we'll just take it up again if it looks like there's no Megs about. They seem to be the main issue when I'm doing this. Just keeping away from the Megs. And that's why I kind of like to keep my Ichthy out in front so that I can get away, out of the way of the Megs and sort that all out if one does show up. We're just going to go around with the leeches again, hit one, we'll go to the back end this time and sort out the tail, doing a little bit of a circle, hit that, and then there's one more to get, which is this one. Oh, I missed it. How am I missing it? Have I missed it twice? Get it! Why didn't you get it? It's right there! Woo! That was getting a little bit touch and go, wasn't it? And then we're just going to swim back up here, feed it, and there we go. We're up to 62%. So I think you get the message. I'm just going to finish this tame off, and I'll be right back with you. And we'll look at what this baby can do, because it's got some really cool features. Particularly, the saddle has some really cool features. Oh, it's surface, and I didn't even mean to make it surface. It's just done it itself. Got to keep an eye on that. It is a little bit worrying. I think when I get the blood there, I'm doing a bit of a bad job, and I'm actually hitting maybe the Shastasaurus as well, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the taming at all when I'm using the kibble. So I think it's pretty much well protected. I'm going to get my ichthy to deal with that if I can, because I need to make this feed. So I'm just going to go straight past, get the feed in, and we've tamed it. There we go. So, wow, we should be able to bray all these things now. This should help out. Let's make sure everything's fighting. I'd like to get my Ichthy wherever that is. Where's that gone? It's vanished. I don't know where it is, but that is the Shastasaurus tamed. I actually only took two more feeds, so I probably didn't need to take a little break and disappear. But it's getting a bit crazy and it's trying to kill everything, so I'm going to get it on passive. And I'm going to get it out of here because my Ichthy's just been killed. Great. Let's move, let's move. I'm back on land where I started and I've got that terrible scuba gear off so that I don't have to hear my own breathing. And I'm here with the Shastasaurus that I just tamed. Now, it seems to better come really close up to land, but I've kept it a little bit further back because it's going to help when we get this saddled up. Now, to get this saddled up, what we got to do is we've got to jump into our inventory and you're going to see why I'm saying this is an end game tame. Not only do you need to tame it with extraordinary kibble, but this saddle, if we type it, is actually level 100. And you'll go, aye, but you can get a level 100 quite quickly if you know how in arc you can. But look, this has to be crafted at a tech replicator. So you can't get the saddle, you can't really use or ride your Shastasaurus until you are tech tier, which means it is definitely end game. So yeah, work your way up to this. You know, don't go out there now being crazy and trying to do it because you probably can't right now. Although some of you maybe have. Maybe some of you have done the boss day one. So we have our Shastasaurus here and we are going to craft up the saddle. And you can see what this is made out of. I think it's fairly reasonably priced. Saying that though, you do have to get the tech tier, which means 
it still costs a lot in that sense but it only uses cement and paste 200 electronics 150 silica pearls 250 crystal 350 and 1500 metal ingots so we're going to get one of these crafted up get that in our inventory i'm going to swim out to the shastasaurus now you'll notice I'm not going to bother putting my scuba tank on because like I explained earlier, this thing saddle means you don't have to have scuba. You can breathe inside of the saddle. It is basically a submarine saddle. So if we put this on here, you can get a little peek at what it looks like. Now your peak might be little, but this is not little. In fact, it is so huge and it connects to the underside of the Shasta but when you're in the shallow, it looks like it glitches through the ground. So let's get in it and let's move this out into the depths so you can see what it actually looks like. So yeah, I've just gone up to my team. I've pressed ride and here we are on our Shasta. Now you get put into the submarine saddle. So I'm actually in there. I don't know if you can see. I can't see. There's icons and things in the way. But that is what it looks like. And it's pretty good looking. I think it's a really nice design. And I understand why they had to move it to the underside. It doesn't look as good as the previous design. But it makes a lot of sense. Because if it was on top, it would be sticking out of the water. And I'm sure that would cause all sorts of physics issues. So this is a clever solution. The only problem is you get the meshing issue that we had at the start there. I'm just going to go under the water a little bit here, and then I will get off the saddle and end up inside of it. So you'll notice here, my oxygen is fine because this is a submarine. It is air tight, and I can breathe in here. Now, it looks really quite good at the minute, but that is because the fog is off. So I can see for miles, it's not quite as clear when you're trying to see out of these windows when fog is on. In fact, I'll quickly turn that on. And there you have it. That is the fog back on. And you can see the difference it makes with the water. You really can't see much at all. But I do really like the design in here. You have yourself the big glass windows. You've got the stair up to the bridge where the controls are, where you steer the Shastasaurus from and control everything on the submarine. And then if you come all the way at the back, you actually have a tech door here that you can pop outside of and you go seamlessly into the water outside. So they've done a really good job of that. It's so clever. I'm really impressed. And like I say, I understand. I'm not too upset about that. The main thing is we've got this nice underwater platform saddle. We can build in it. We can transport teams in it and we can have a good time. When you see the other features, you'll realize exactly what I mean. So this is the saddle. I think it looks really nice inside and out. But let's look at what it can do. I'm just going to ride here. Now you can be in third person and you can see everything. Or you can go into first and you actually get a cockpit view, which I think is really quite nice. I like this better because I feel like I can just really see where I'm going. And it actually feels massively like a submarine. And I don't think you would have got that feeling if this compartment was on top. I think it would have felt really cool. Would have been nice. It would have felt more like you were driving a car or something. And you don't get that whole nice view out front and below. Now, the first thing I want to show you is this thing obviously has a standard melee attack. And all you do for that is you left click and it'll do a bite. And there's something on the way here that it looks like I'm going to have to fight. So I'm going to hold space bar just to surface a little and start trying to do damage to this. So we'll do what we can. Why am I not biting anymore? There's something going wrong there. It seemed like I was biting, and now I'm not biting when I click. I've not had that problem. What is going on? Is it just something glitchy at the minute with the saddle? Am I actually biting? Can I do damage to that? I'm not getting a biting animation, and I'm clicking to bite. So what is happening? Yeah, apparently, apparently I can't bite anymore. You saw I was biting at the start. Oh, and I bit then, but I didn't actually bite, and that was behind us somehow. Oh, it's done a fight animation there. Do I have to be still to do the animation? It looks like if I'm moving, I don't get the bite animation. If I'm a certain distance wrong with a camera, I don't think I get the bite animation. But I seem to be able to do damage still as long as I get the center of my screen over the creature that I'm fighting. That's really strange. Something that I haven't encountered yet, but you can see me meshing and clipping right through the bottom of the map there. So come on then, we'll have you. There we've got the animation back there. Now, this thing doesn't seem very strong, if I'm honest with you. I do have a level 15. I don't know what Meg I'm fighting right now. 
But we are struggling to do anything to this. Come on. Hurry up. Get out of my way. I just wanted to show the melee and you've come and interrupted. I mean, I'm getting to show it in all its glory, but there's other things. I don't need you right now. So annoying. Right, it's dead. Thank heavens we can carry on. Let me get out of the mesh. I don't feel comfortable being in there. If I get out of the saddle and I end up stuck, I'm going to be so annoyed, so mad. But yes, like I say, we have our stand dead bite that we can do with the Shasta with our primary attack. And then we have a secondary attack. And this one is our special ability. And you have a few. And you cycle between them by using control on PC with your right and left clicks. And they are indicated by the icon to the right of the center of the screen, just above the hotbar. So if I click the left click, I go left, that's periscope. If I click the right click, I'll go back. So you can cycle between these. Now, sonar is what you would expect it to be. If I have a little swim around and I click my right click now while that's selected, what will happen is it will ping and it will try and show me where creatures nearby are. Now, there's nothing, oh, there is, right there, look, and down there. Right, you can see all of those creatures getting highlighted, so that can be really, really useful. I can see lots of reasons why I would want to use that. As well as Sona, we've got a, another attack, which is Flashbang. And as far as I can tell, this stuns things, so we're going to right-click behind this, let it do its thing, bang, and it will stun that donkey there. Now, the thing is, anything it's going to stun has to kind of be front and centre. It does buy you a little bit of time, it does slow things down, and it does allow you to get your attacks away. Now again, my melee seems absolutely useless, so this isn't great. It seems really hard to get any bites on it while you're saddled up, or at least because you don't have that animation, it's hard to tell what you're doing. But just get the center of your screen over that creature and you seem to get the damage. We've got more things coming, so it might actually be good to show you the next secondary attack. I'm going to cycle to it, this is a pulse, so when I right click, watch what happens. This is crazy. Bang, everything gets knocked back, kicked away, and the go for a long distance. Gives me some time again to get away, move out of the area, but it just reassess how I want to take on this fight. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is just get away, because I don't want to deal with these. Something that is really cool about this saddle, which I didn't really consider mentioning, is the fact that the submarine has lights on the front. So when you are exploring and searching, you actually get a really clear image of what's going on in front of you. Remember, I turned the fog back on, but when I'm coming up and past these rocks, I can see them clear as day. Like, it's a really, really cool feature. So going around, exploring, having this out, you're gonna be able to see what you're doing so much better than in any other situation, let's face it. So that is super cool. But let's get back to our special attacks. We're gonna go into third person again, and I'm just going to cycle to the next one which is torpedo. Now, torpedoes are essentially missiles underwater, so we use the rocket-propelled grenades for this. I don't know if that's technically correct, how that would work, but we are using those, so we're going to put those into the inventory, and then they automatically register in the saddle. Now, to use these, we have to right-click to aim, and you get your crosshair, and then you left-click to fire and you'll see the torpedo shooting off there towards where I aimed it. I do feel again, this is a little bit easier to do inside. You can see much better where you're aiming and what you're trying to hit. But let's just maybe shoot these cliffs here to get a feel for it. And out it goes, get the nice little sound effect, and then that will hit the target that I fired it to. The homing missiles sadly don't work. That would have been too OP, I think, but still. It is really cool that we've got another way of, well, a long-ranged attack, basically, for this creature. So I really do like that. I think that is a really nice touch. So those are all of the weapons, the three special abilities, the saddle's torpedoes, but the saddle has another feature too, the periscope. And again, we cycle across to that. Now, I was playing about with this, and I noticed something really, really interesting. I don't feel like it explains it very well, but if you look to the menu on the right-hand side, which is explaining all of the things you can do while riding this, it says periscope zoom height, and it says to hold the left click. Now, I have to use right click to get into the ability, and if I left click, nothing happens. So it's like, what's going on here? All right, well, I realized the scroll wheel 
is actually what controls the periscope. And you have a zoom here, which is crazy. Like, look how far I can zoom. Like, I can see for absolutely miles. This is such a good scope. Way better than the spyglass, let's face it. Like, unbelievably better. Better than the scope on the Fabi Sniper, I reckon. Pretty darn good. So you can get a really good look around. Now, I thought that was cool, but it was saying about height. So I clicked again. And watch what happens when I scroll. I can raise the periscope. And you can actually raise this high enough so that if you are near the surface of the water, you can look out of the top. So I'll just put that away and I will make my way up towards the surface to show you this just by holding the spacebar. And when I get somewhere near the top, not all the way near the top, let's not be crazy, right? We're just going to stop so people can't see us. And hopefully this is high enough. I get my periscope out and it's on zoom still. Let's left click to change it to height. I'm just going to zoom up and look at that. You can actually get a view of what's going on on the surface. Proper stealth, proper submarine. I really like that. And if you click left click again or your primary attack, you still have the zoom. So you can absolutely see for miles with this. The one thing that's a little bit disappointing is I was thinking, can I like torpedo from there but you can't you can't sadly it would be cool if you could have torpedoed from the periscope or even fired missiles out above the water i think again that might have been a little bit too op but it's nice to bit of see what's going on on the land there without actually having to leave your submarine which is really cool i do like that a lot now that's it for most of the abilities but i did notice there was another icon to the left of the periscope icon which says free swimming and i was like what's that what does that mean so i was just spamming different keys pushing different things and it changed when i was near the surface of the water basically if you hold spacebar and make your way up to the surface of the water if you're there and you push spacebar again it changes to surface swimming and what this does is it locks the Shastasaurus to the top of the sea, to the top of the water. And you can just swim around without worrying about going underneath, which I think is really nice as well. And I guess that's pretty cool if you want to park up, make sure it's not going to move or move it around the area if you are trying to get this somewhere and making sure you are as high up as you can be. Because then you can really move your camera around without worrying about this changing how deep it is in the water so i thought that was a nice little touch i do like that to get rid of it you just hold c and that will lower you down in the water again because that is the descend key so crouch if you hold crouch you will descend if you hold jump you will ascend and when you're on the surface if you hit jump again you can lock yourself on the surface of the water just by hitting space bar again so there we go we're up on top and we're locked in and then i can go and do whatever i need to do in my saddle which is really quite nice. So this is how it looks. Those are the different features that the Shastasaurus has. But then you can do things in this saddle. Now, the first thing you instantly want to try is building. So I am in creative mode still. We will grab some foundations and let's be silly and we'll get metal, even though we could clearly just get tech right now. And what I really like about this, and I wish it was the case with rafts, is when you place this, it goes down to a super low snap point. And this doesn't affect you driving the submarine at all, because obviously you're up on the bridge. But still, I feel like if they can do this on here, they could easily do this somewhere else, like on platform saddles and the likes. And I'm just going to snug this into the corner. And you can just build out, and even through the side apparently. I don't know if that's because I've got clipping off. I feel like I've got clipping turned on. I'm pretty sure that shouldn't be able to happen, right? But you can build foundations on here. Something that I didn't test, which I would really like to, is let's say we get a forge. Can we just put that straight down on the base of the saddle? You can. So you don't even need to put foundations on it. You can just build straight on the structure, which I think is nicer. It looks a lot neater. Now, if you do want to build little rooms and things like that, obviously you can pop this here like that. Get yourself some walls. Maybe put your generator in it or something. I don't know to keep it out of the way. It's going to be down to you how you want to build out your platform saddle there. But you can build in here and you can also just build straight on the base of the saddle. I guess that would mean, let's just test it, that we can build up. If I can get a ceiling here, I'm guessing I should have a bit of build on top like so. 
Will it take it? It will. So you can actually have multiple floors in here if you really want to. And can we put things on top of them? We can. So yeah, you can really kit this place out. This is a really good size and really quite an impressive base. The only thing that I would be concerned about ever so slightly is I am in creative mode right now and this thing will have a carry weight. So there's potentially the pitfall that this thing will have limitations based on the weight of the tames you're carrying and the structures that you put on it. And if you are worried about that, I guess you just have to level up weight to get as much on this as you can. Speaking of tames coming on here though, I want to show you how you do that, right? Obviously I could spawn them in and just make them appear, etc, etc. Or we could do them out in cryopods. But there is a feature which allows you to do it from outside of the Shastasaurus. If we look here on our radial wheel, we have the ability to onboard. That will onboard me because I'm the only person on here. We can then board dinos. And if there's dinos nearby, you can select which ones and it will board them. So I'm going to go near the shore and get some creatures to spawn in. And I'm going to show you how that works. I've come to a really janky place. I've gone to the other side of the water, down south to the redwood side, because you cannot get close to the shoreline. And I just wanted to see how this would perform and what you can do if you can't get your Shasta close enough to the shore. So, as you can see at the minute, I cannot pick up any dinos. What I'm going to do is, because I've not done it like this, is I want to see if I actually stay on the surface and swim towards my creatures. I want to see if they can be boarded on even when the submarine is in the mesh. I think this is an interesting test. You want to get your Shasta up close and personal to your dinos. And when you are parked up, if you are close enough, you should have an option to board them. Now, I can't board because it is blocked by the mesh. So it'll tell you, you can't do that, right? It's not possible. So what we'll do is we will try our next method, which is to swim these out into the water and see if they can be boarded while they're swimming, because I haven't tested that. We are approaching the Shasta here, and I'm just gonna get inside and see if I can board these while they are swimming. But I also wanna test what can be boarded using this method. You can chuck some really big creatures out in here, but I'm unsure what can actually be brought on board. You can also bring creatures in through the little tech gate there. But let's just test this. If I go to boarding now, I can bring in the pyramid. And there it goes. It gets loaded in here nicely and gets stacked side on. Now, the interesting thing is, because it's in the submarine, it can actually get its fire effect back. It was swimming, so it lost it. But there we go. That is back. If any more creatures got nearby, not by the looks of things. Let's see if we can walk it on. We weren't getting the boarding sign, but I presume we can walk this in through the back. In fact, if I'm super quick, maybe we can jam it there and then see if the boarding will work. No, you can't board a Megatherium, so that is too big to be boarded. But what I can do is I can swim it on. So I don't know why that makes sense. I've been bringing the Rex down and for some reason, the Raptor's finally shown up. I wonder why that wasn't boarding. Maybe it was blocked or too far away. Can the Rex go in? Oh my goodness, you can literally just walk the Rex in. So you can walk Rexes into here. Again, I'm not sure how many you can fit, but you can walk them in and they seem to just clip out the sides and stay in here fine, which is interesting. Like it's walking against something. It's not free. So we can get a Rex in here, even if we can't board it. How about the Raptor? Can we board that now? We can. So that was just out of reach. So it seems like there are some creatures when they're smaller that can be boarded using that method. Pyromain size. I wonder if a Stego could, but a Megatherium can't. But you can walk the bigger ones on yourself. I've managed to get a Rex in here and a Megatherium in here. I'm going to do one final test though. I'm going to take these guys out and let's see if the Giga can actually swim in. So yeah, you can't board the Giga or walk it into the back. I'm going to give it one more go, just for good measure. But I've got a feeling that we aren't going to succeed. I'm going to stay high, just walk through. Yeah, I'm not getting the Giga in there. The Giga doesn't want to stay inside. Yeah, it's run out of oxygen. So the Giga is a no, but a Rex is a yes. As long as you've got cryopods to get it back out with. Little bit crazy that if you ask me, 
But that is mad. The things we're going to be able to do on this map with this creature are incredible. Honestly, absolutely incredible. So that is the Shastasaurus. It is an end game tame. It has a submarine saddle and it is super cool because you can use this to live, breathe underwater. You can use it to explore really nicely. And of course, it's got some really interesting attacks and features. But more importantly, quite an enjoyable and fairly unique taming method. So that's it, all wrapped up, which is why I'm going to call that there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. If you'd like to get to know the community a little bit better, check out the links in the description below and come hang out with us. But until next time, you guys take care and I will catch us later. Ciao.